and we're going to talk about goals today. So I'm super excited and I hope that you're ready for some goal setting and to see what is holding you back. So I'm going to switch the camera over, double tap. Hello everybody. Whoops, we switched back again. Hi everybody, I'm Jenny. I'm on Fire Fit and I'm here to talk about goal setting. And I just wanted to introduce myself. I am a physician assistant. I work in family medicine and urgent care. I also am the founder of On Fire Fit and I support charities as well as help empower people to live a better and healthier life. And for 18 years, I have been working in healthcare and I found that I got really excited when people wanted to get off of medication, when they were excited to make changes in their life and really feel good about themselves. And so I developed this program on Fire Fit and it really started off as a charity. So I'll talk about that more later, but I wanted to let you know that I am doing a challenge coming up called No Excuses. So today I'm gonna to talk about what I am setting up for my people that I coach and how they are gonna go about making this challenge work for them. So it's a free challenge, anybody can join. You can email me at onfirefit at gmail.com and I also have a website, it's onfo.org and that is in French, it means on fire. So the way you spell that is E-N-F-E-U dot org. So we're gonna talk about five ways that you can reach a goal and what I think is the big reason a lot of people don't reach that goal. Might not be what you'd think. So number one is what is your goal? Okay, that to me is kind of obvious for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people wanna lose weight, some people wanna just get off of medication, some people wanna get stronger and healthier, um, some people wanna get closer to God. And since I am a coach in faith, fitness, and food, this is an area that is of extreme interest to me because I believe that a lot of what we find with hangups is our lack of connection to God. And so I use that in a lot of the things that I do with coaching. Uh, I believe that we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And because of that, if we ask him into our life to help us even in that area, we end up succeeding. So the first thing is to set a goal and your goal is going to be something concrete. Not just I wanna lose weight, not just I wanna get off of medicine, not just I wanna lower my cholesterol or something like that. Give it something concrete. I want to lose five pounds in this 21 day challenge. I want to be able to get up off of my knees without falling over. I want to be able to get closer to God by spending time with him each day. So as soon as you've identified what your goal is, it needs to be concrete and specific. So you're gonna jot that down. And I actually have an email that I send out that allows you to fill this all out. The next thing you're gonna do is figure out what your excuse is. I always think that when we make excuses, we have basically taken it off our radar. It has made it out of our ability to even identify, focus, and pay attention to. And because of that, as long as we're making excuses, we are not going to make progress. So if you're just tired all the time, that is an excuse. We can work through that. It's not a problem. If you are time deficient, you have a lot going on, we can work through that. We usually need to identify where your wasted time is, whether that means getting an assistant to help with some of the tasks around the house, whether that means spending less time on social media, just sort of randomly looking at things. Um, but usually time is something that we can work with. So you wanna find where your area is that you feel is holding you back and what exactly is that excuse. 
The next thing you're going to do is make a plan. So on number three step, your plan is to decide what you can do regular amount of time, regular intervals, and write that down. So for instance, if I were going to start exercising, which to me, that's already kind of part of who I am. I don't really have to think about it. I just do it every day in some format. And so if you're trying to get started with that, what you would do is you would de decide three days a week, I am gonna set my alarm and get up 30 minutes early, and I'm gonna meet somebody to go for a walk or go to the gym, or you will have a preset situation where you know somebody is going to be paying attention to you following through. So that is where your accountability is going to come in. When you set up number four step, your accountability, you need somebody that will be there telling you, did you do this? Asking you if you followed through. And if that person is keeping you accountable, they have to be able to give you a repercussion if you don't follow through. And that has to be very specific as well. So when you are trying to pick something specific, I love Shalene Johnson. I listen to her podcasts all the time. I do Smart Success, which is one of her programs that helps people move forward in different areas of their life and business and stuff like that. And one of the things that she talked about is having your kids keep you accountable. And if you don't get up those three days a week and do your 30 minute exercise, that you will um, be doing their chores for the week or you'll be paying them twice their allowance. And most people say, I do not want to have to do that. And so therefore they end up doing the work and there are all different kinds of techniques to help keep people accountable. I am here to help you, help you get those steps in place, help you get that going. And so those are all the things that we are gonna do to try to get you towards your goal. So step number one, identify the goal very specifically. Step number two is decide what your excuse is. What is that hang up that seems to always hold you back? Um, if you say it's financial, then we need to come up with something that doesn't cost much, but it doesn't hold you back. The step three is to have an, a very definitive plan, and it has to be with actual time and give you a specific day of the week that you're doing it, specific time of the week, that kind of thing, okay? And then step number four is you need an accountability partner. You need somebody that is willing to check in on you every day. Uh, it can be very simple. It could be a spouse or a friend, or um, I actually help keep a few people accountable too. And then you need your repercussion if you don't follow through. And your big reason that you oftentimes don't make it is because you don't ask God to guide and lead you. And that is totally what happened to me for many years. I had a lot of stomach trouble. My stomach was pretty much a nightmare for like 25 years. And I did pray about it, but honestly, I kind of left God out of that part of it. I really did feel that I think I know better what I need. And when I met a wonderful guy named Ari Witten, he helped revamp the way that I eat. I eat very whole foods. Um, portions are all a different way than I, I'm used to eating. Um, I actually probably eat more than I used to and I didn't change my weight, which I've always been thin, but I feel really good now. And I had to take a leap of faith because the way he recommended that I eat was so different from everything that I've ever done before. It was really scary and I prayed very hard about that for a long time saying, God, if this is something that I need to do, I pray that you give me the strength to just keep going forward. I hadn't eaten beef in like 25 years, something like that. And I started having to eat more meat and beef. 
I had restricted a lot of different kinds of fats because I thought those were triggering my stomach trouble and I started eating a lot more fats and there's a lot of different things connected to that that make us feel stressed because it's not what we're used to. How am I gonna react to that? How's my stomach gonna feel? What's gonna happen to my weight? All of that. And God totally provided for me. He gave me a wonderful person to help me, very patient and taught me how to eat differently. And it's funny because through all these years being in the medical field, I actually got into medicine because nobody seemed to understand what was going on with my stomach. And I wanted to have compassion for other people and teach them how to eat better. In the process, here I was, oh, probably 16 years into medicine and I finally started feeling better. And it's an amazing feeling. I would love to help you too. It is something that is life-changing. When you don't have daily pain, uh, when you're feeling good and energetic, you have energy, it's exciting. So I would love for you to join me for anything that I can help you with with coaching. I believe that we really need to incorporate God into all that we do and love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, with all of our strength. And in doing that, in asking him into even our health and our fitness, we actually start to see our goals come alive. And it's so exciting. Last night I was reading a verse and it hit me. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And that's from Proverbs 13, 12. And I've read that verse before. I grew up in the church and everything, but I didn't ever really understand what that meant. When we kind of put off our goals, when we decide that there's too many other things that were taking up our time or our attention, and yet we know in the back of our mind this is something really important, that we get healthy, that we feel better spiritually or emotionally or whatever the goal is that you really feel in your heart you need, when we keep putting it off, it makes us sick. It makes us sick from head to toe, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically. But when we get the desire, and now we have a plan, and we have people motivating us, and we have God on our side, it is a tree of life. And a tree of life it is exciting. It makes you come alive. It makes you want to get up in the morning. It makes you want to help other people. And so I am so excited to share this with you. I'm on Fire Fit. You can find me at, I'm on Facebook on Fire Fit, on Instagram on Fire Fit. I have a Gmail on firefit at gmail.com. My website is www. I guess we don't have to say that anymore, huh? Um, on foe.org. On firefit is coming. I actually have a wonderful lady that is putting together my website, but for now, the website is enfeu.org. And I support charities in India as well as locally with the proceeds from my business. And so I hope that you'll join me along the way and please always send me questions, comments. I just love to help and I just wanna serve and I just want to show people God's love because he has given me so much grace and love and it makes me just want to give it to you too. So if everybody of you know me very well, shoes is my thing. So I have to end this with the pair of shoes next to me. I actually kicked them off for this. But this way you can see what shoes am I wearing today. Because my hubby totally provides all these things. And I love them to death. So here we go. I'm going to see if I can make this happen. So we're going to go this way down to... You can see the shoes. There they are. Some of my favorites. Okay, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day and send me a message if you'd like. Talk to you soon.